Hello there, it's Samantha. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, hi, my name is Samantha, as I just said, and I'm 20 years old and I am in my second year of university. Anyway, but today I'm coming to you with a video which is not very original and I'm really sorry about that. I'm coming to the end of this term at uni, which is when a lot of my deadlines are. So I just haven't really had any time to film and last week I was ill, unfortunately, so I haven't been able to come up with anything original. Not that a lot of my videos are original, but this is really not. Today I'm going to be reacting to one star reviews of one of my favorite books of all time and I'm like nervous, but I'm also excited. So I recently saw this video on Katie's from Kate's Book Dates channel. It's a really hard thing to say. That's where I got inspiration from. I'll link that video down below. She may have done the opposite. So reacting to five star reviews of books she hated. I can't remember. She may have done both. I'm not sure. Today I'm just going to read reviews from one of my favorite books. This is my favorite book of last year. I pretty much mention it all the time, but that was Scythe by Neil Schusterman. I really, really, really loved this book. So it's going to hurt me to read these reviews, but it's fine. And also another disclaimer is obviously I'm not going to try to criticize anyone else's opinion. Obviously everyone is allowed to hate whatever book they want or love whatever book they want. It doesn't matter. I, I don't care. It, it really doesn't matter to me if you hate this book and I'm not meaning any hate towards the people who wrote these reviews. I'm not going to include any of their information because I don't want to call anyone out or anything for hating a book because they're totally allowed to do that. I'm gonna read the reviews. So this first one. So this person said 1.5 ish stars. For a YA book this is awfully bland and unsophisticated. I disagree. Like one might expect from a children's slash middle grade book, especially for such a violent book and one that sounds so cool. It reminds me of one of those kids books I loved when I was 10 and try to read now and realize it was actually pretty lame. I 100% disagree, but okay. Problems. Vague world building riddled with contradictions introduced conveniently to make various plot points fit. This might be correct. I don't know. Um, I didn't really notice anything when I was reading it, but I did read it really quickly, so it might just be that I read it so quickly that I didn't pick up on the problems with the world building. I will be rereading it before the final book comes out, so maybe I'll pick up on these things when I reread it, but first time around, I adored it, so. Characters fall into two camps, good and evil. Characters within each camp are virtually indistinguishable. I disagree. Some characters are definitely morally gray. I wouldn't call some of them, like there are some of them who I wouldn't describe as good or evil. Like they're definitely in the in-between like I think all sides are kind of in the in-between because obviously they're killing people and I know it's their job and that's how the world is this utopian society but I definitely wouldn't say that there's good and evil I'd say that there's definitely more of a spectrum there. Forced, first I hate you, now I love you, romance between the main characters. I kind of like, I get where they're coming from, but I just, the romance was really not that big in the book and it was, it, the romance wasn't necessary in the book, I will give you that, but I kind of knew that the romance would never be, would never really come to anything. I hope it doesn't because I really just don't want there to be that romance, I just think it wouldn't work. I get where they're coming from. But yeah, anyway. Juvenile writing and laughable dialogue. I really enjoyed his writing style. I haven't read anything else by him, but I actually really enjoyed it, so okay. Twists I could predict before even opening the book. I didn't see the twists coming. There were some twists I saw coming, but like most of the time, I mean, I don't think I'm that good at predicting things, so that's probably why, but okay. Faux wisdom exploring what is supposed to be the moral ambiguity that is scythedom, but no grayness is pre presented when there could slash should have been. It's completely black and white. As I just said, I think that there definitely is this, like, grayness. I don't think that it is good and evil, black or white. I think that there's definitely more of a spectrum there. So I completely disagree with this point, but it's fine. It seems a lot of people loved this, which is great. I think it will work really well for certain audiences to which I just don't belong. Sorry, not sorry. The cover's pretty sweet and I finished, so there's that. Fair enough. This person made some good points, but I did disagree with a lot of them, but, you know. It's cool. We're allowed different opinions, as I said. Okay, moving on. Oh my god, this was such a frustrating read. I am baffled at the 4.3 score. It started really good, but it's impossible to escape from the flaws of the story, which turned into cliche pretty quickly. I know all fantasy slash supernatural stuff is bound to be unrealistic. Okay, I accept that, but a good fantasy slash supernatural story will have a set of logic in it still be logical within its boundaries. So you have all the technology to defy mortality, but still use people to kill other people for population control and to get trained in martial arts and weapons to do so. If it was a fun read, I wouldn't have mind I wouldn't have mined those, okay, but it was really long and boring, tons of teenage drama, and all the philosophy squeezed that was squeezed in was so stiffening, it made me question the whole point of Scythedom, which seems po pointless to be honest. I feel like the reason to add in the philosophy is to kind of like, you know, teach people about these like views in a way that's fun and exciting and accessible to teenagers. I don't know. 
I'm not a teenager anymore, so don't ask me. What do I know? Oh, this one starts out so bad. To me, it's one thing that a book is terrible, while it's another thing entirely when I see potential of what it could be, but fails to deliver it. This book is clearly an example of the latter. Okay, good. I thought they were going to say it was terrible. Ugh, I hate great ideas going to waste. Thinking back on it, this wasn't worse than Young Elites. However, it was a pretty close call. I still haven't read the Young Elites. So maybe I'll like that if they hated Scythe and they also hated Young Elites. Maybe I'll like Young Elites. I'm racking my brain trying to find something positive besides the cover, but I can't. Harsh. Okay. World building. Almost immediately I noticed something wrong. No descriptions. There wasn't any description of the characters. The most that we got was description of their robes. There wasn't any description of any buildings either. Also there wasn't any description of what with what this new mid-America looks like. How it functions and what sets it apart from other places, let alone other dystopias. I feel like it was kind of left to your imagination. I, I know I kind of get what they're saying, but I think that it was pretty easy to imagine, but okay. Due to this, I never felt like I was reading this. Instead, I truly felt like my eyes were just simply scanning words printed onto a dead tree. Oh, that's harsh. Okay. This was practically the second book I read in a row that made death boring. How the hell do you screw that up? Let me tell you, you make the damn book predictable. No twist made me think, oh my god, this changes everything. This was an amazing plot twist. No, it's exactly like Solo, a Star Wars story. Everything can be predicted way ahead of time. I have not seen Solo, but okay. That's a spoiler. Halfway through the book, it's revealed that fire is the only thing that can kill people besides scythes. Really, out of all the things out there, fire is the only one that can actually kill someone outright? Well, I, I mean, fire does kill people, so yes. <laughs> Why on earth would we treat someone that gleans someone we cared about like celebrities? So that you would get immunity. Hello? How does it work when a scythe kills? Like, do the revival centers get notified not to revive that person? I don't know. Well, it must just be set up that way. Also, the Thunderhead is an all-knowing being that would have seen it happen and knows that the scythe chose to do that. So I think everything just sorts itself out, but okay. Since the problem is overpopulation, why not think about limiting revivals and or limiting the number of people within a household? That's a good point, but then there wouldn't be this story. It would be quite interesting and would probably work better too if the entire book was focused on the dynamic between the age of morality and the scythedom. I'm pretty sure it was the age of mortality, but okay. Think about it. By page one, most dystopias are already established where everyone is used to being the proverbial cog in the machine for a while now. So what if we actually get to see the transition to this? That would definitely be interesting. I, I get where they're coming from and I'd love to see a book like that, but that wasn't this book. The problem is that this clearly tries to have moral ambiguity, but it comes off as your basic good versus evil scenario. Again, I don't think it does. I honestly can't tell the darn difference between the heroes and villains and not in a good way. They both kill. The only difference is that I'm not going to say that because that's a spoiler. But this person really didn't warn about what their spoiler is, but okay. Writing. It's bland and simple with no surprise at all. It tells instead of shows much like many other YA books. Much like Red Rising, practically every other sentence tries so hard to be quote worthy and awesome, but to me it comes off as being really pretentious. I really did not notice that in this book. Like when you read something by John Green, no mean to slander him, I've loved so many of his books. So I'm not trying to be mean or anything like that to John Green, but I can definitely get why people think that his characters are pretentious, but I did not find that in Scythe at all. So I disagree. Characters, they're really bland as hell and I just can't give a single crap about Citra, Rowan, Faraday, and Curie. I wouldn't even blink if all four of them died at the same time. Harsh. Okay, the romance was stupid, forced, unnecessary, and stupid. Yes, everyone agrees. Nobody likes the romance in it, I don't think. I mean, does every YA novel have to have a romance and a and as a subplot? What? No, they don't. And there are definitely books out there that don't have romance. And as I said, I think a lot of people didn't like the romance. If friendship was implemented, implemented, I would still hate the book, but that would work better. I definitely agree. Hell, lust feels like a good idea to implement to see if what the characters feel really is love. What? I really wanted to enjoy this, unlike City of Bones, Throne of Glass, and The Young Elites, where I knew what I was getting myself into. Then I realized this was a YA dystopia and nothing good comes from that genre. <sighs> okay, typically I would agree with this person because I'm not a fan of dystopia. I don't really read it anymore. The only dystopia that I like is The Hunger Games and Scythe. And every other dystopia I've read recently, I've really not enjoyed apart from Scythe. So I do get where they're coming from, but I have to disagree. So I've already read a lot of reviews and honestly, I have, I'm starting to lose my voice a bit. I need some water and I need to take a long break and I'm just getting heated and I feel like I'm saying a lot of the same stuff. So yeah, I don't really have anything else to say and I can read more reviews and get angry, but it's fine. Like I'm trying to be a more peaceful and positive person. So it's fine. And honestly, I don't care if people hate the book. It's fine. Like I hate books that other people love. For example, I hate Ready Player One and so many people love that book. I know that a lot of people love Scythe. So I've got lots of people to discuss it with in a positive way. Anyway, but that is all that I have for today's video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, feel free to subscribe down below and I will see you very soon with another video. Bye.